America's maternal mortality rates are among the highest in the developed world and rising. You are twice as likely to die from pregnancy complications in the United States as you are in any other developed nation. Among black women, that rate is even higher, leading the vice president for the first time ever to designate this past week as Black Maternal Health Week. Joining me now is Jennifer Carol Foy, Democratic candidate for Virginia governor and former member of the state House of Delegates, who has spoken frankly about her harrowing experience giving birth to twins. And Dr. Laura Riley, the first black woman to chair the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Weill Cornell Medicine and New York Presbyterian. Thank you both very much for being here. Dr. Riley, let me start with you and just ask the flat out question. Why aren't black women being listened to? It's a it's I think it's a long story. Um, I think, unfortunately, there's several things at play. Um, and, you know, tops on the list is, is systemic racism. And I think just, you know, years of medicine just not not being able to listen, um, not recognizing the impact that our biases have on, you know, the quality of health care. And, um, you know, thankfully, people are waking up, putting the data together and figuring out that we have to we have to do better. No question about it. Uh, one of the things that you think is important is implicit bias training. Um, w would that actually help? I don't think that's the whole answer. I think that, you know, implicit bias training probably works for, you know, the first two weeks after you do it. But I think really hmm. what we need to do is, you know, create environments where people understand that that implicit bias that we all carry has um, negative ramifications for patient care and certainly the quality of patient care. And then I think we need to, you know, build um, and cultivate uh, departments and, um, you know, health systems where you feel comfortable calling people out on when those, you know, uh, microaggressions and implicit biases show up um, so that we can, you know, turn to our nursing partners or whoever you're, um, you know, is on your team and say, you know what, that's that's not right. And that's adversely impacting the care this patient gets. Delegate Foy, talk about your experience. You gave birth to twins and it, it, it was not easy. Uh, no, Jonathan, it was not. And thank you for having me. I have to tell you that during my delegate race as a legislator, I was pregnant almost my entire campaign with identical boys. And, you know, I gave birth early and my pain after birth was actually worse than labor. And I complained hmm. to the nurses and they told me it was natural, it was normal, it would go away. So the problem is, is that I wasn't seen, I wasn't heard and I wasn't believed, but I was sent home. And I remember one day falling to my knees in excruciating pain and my husband, Jeff, just picked me up, put me in, in the car and rushed me to the emergency room where I was immediately admitted and informed that a couple more days at home would have cost me my life. And so this is a traumatic and serious and what's really outrageous is preventative issue um, that black women are dying at third country rates, even though we are the richest and most powerful country in the world. And even in Virginia, we're one of the wealthiest states in this nation. And that is why I'm running for governor, because we have to give a voice to the voices and stand up for the people who have been ignored, neglected, and left behind for far too long. Well, Delegate Foy, I'm going to say, th them some cute kids <laughs> you have. Um, but can you, in all seriousness, what were the responses you got from medical personnel when you told them about your very serious symptoms? So I was dismissed. I was told that you know, this is your first, uh, these are your first children. This is totally normal. You know, just take more pain medication. It'll eventually subside. And it actually uh, escalated um, to a point where I couldn't even walk. I couldn't get out of bed. But you listen to the experts. You want to trust them and believe them that they have your, your best interests at heart. And they know what they're talking about and saying. And I didn't know about the black maternal mortality phenomena at that time, and that I was almost a clear statistic because it doesn't, ima it doesn't matter your educational attainment, your social economic status, where you live. It matters that you have black skin, and that's it. And that's a determining factor as to why women are losing their lives at exceedingly high rates than our white counterparts. Dr. Riley, what advice would you give 
to black women, as a medical professional, to black women about how to do as much as they can to ensure that their voices are heard as um, you know the, the the woman who wrote the column for the Grio she had a whole list of things that she did to try to be heard sounding professional and code switching dressing up for doctor appointments but it shouldn't have to go that far in order for a healthcare professional to take a patient seriously no, it shouldn't, and that's horrifying. And as a health professional who's been doing this for you know thirty years, you know when I hear these stories, I just am you know sick to my stomach. But what I tell my patients who you know come in and you know I, the first thing I say is just speak up. You and I are in a partnership here, and I can't help you if I don't know what's going on. And I I tell them, you know, you need to speak up to me. You need to speak up to anybody who's on my team. If you're not being heard, raise your hand even louder. You know, every single hospital in this country has an escalation path. So you may be talking to a nurse who's not listening, but there's a doctor behind that. There's a midwife behind that. Um, and you just keep going up the chain. Now, should you have to do that? No. Um, but there are many situations where you do need to do that. And I think something that is really important is that, you know, it, it was easy for us to say in the past, oh, it was just access. Black women just didn't have access to quality health care. And we know, based on the story we just heard, as well as Serena Williams' story, mm -hmm. it's not just access, right? They had access to, to health care, but not quality health care. So we know that there's more to the story. And Delegate Foy, I'll give you the last word here, given what you went through. What, advi what advice, having gone through what you went through, what advice would you give yourself um, back then? And for black women who are watching now, who, who are pregnant and might be, and for good reason, worried about the experience that they're, they're about to undergo to get through all this. Yeah, I would just want myself and all the women out there to know that a safe pregnancy and childbirth is a right and not a privilege. So, you know, in order to have a, chase, a safe uh, childbirth, you, sh you shouldn't have to have a Jeff Foy, but you do need a governor uh, who understands. And that's why as the next governor of Virginia, I'm gonna ensure to make doulas covered by Medicaid so we can get the culturally competent care we deserve, do things like investing in the maternal and infant mortality review board so we can find evidence-based solutions to this problem. And I have a rich, a plethora of other ideas and policies I will pass if you go to my website at jennifercarolfoy.com and see it there. <laughs> Jennifer Carol Foy, Dr. Laura Riley, thank you both very much for coming to the Sunday show and talking about this very important topic.